This episode of Switchcraft is brought to you by Jose Young Wong. Support Switchcraft on my other content for as little as a dollar and get exclusive rewards at patreon.com slash run jump stomp. Name? Patron? Save? Ooh. Okay. Um, 175. <clears throat> hey, Morgan, what's up? <sighs> Excuse me. Episode 175 of Switchcraft is brought to you by the NES Archive. Join me on my journey through the North American NES library, one game at a time. Head on over to youtube.com slash run, jump, stomp. And we've got all kinds of videos from all of the launch games. And we are now moving on past the launch games for the uh, North American NES library. And I'm having a lot of fun. The next video that I'm going to make is about Mock Rider, which some people think is a launch game and some people are not sure if it's a launch game. Uh, so I didn't include it, but it's it, it doesn't matter if it's a launch game or not. I'm going to be talking about it real soon. And uh, again, the URL for that is youtube.com slash run jump stomp. I don't know if you stated your opinion, but what do you think about Smash on Switch? Is it going to be a port or not? Thanks. Uh, D Corleone 12. Let me. I think I have. I've talked about it, and I think the the real answer uh, is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's going to be a port or not. But if you want my extended answer, if I could just find my YouTube studio. Here we go. Um, if you want my extended answer, where I, I think I talked about this for a good 15 minutes at one point. So let me just find that link. Smash. Search. Uh, here we go. Okay. So view on YouTube. Close this. Pause that copy here you go so at dc don corleone there you go that video right there is my extended answer to is smash a port or a new game uh, but i think it doesn't matter because what makes it different you know what i mean uh, anyway check out that video for my full answer <clears throat> All right. Switchcraft is recorded live three times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern and on Saturday whenever I can get to it. Make sure that you tune in live at twitch.tv slash run jump stomp. Now let's start with the news. I feel like I should just take that section out of there. Maybe I should do it like this. Let me try something different. Switchcraft is recorded live three times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern and on Saturday whenever I can get to it. Tune in live at twitch.tv slash run jump stomp. This episode of Switchcraft is brought to you by Jose Yong Wong. Support Switchcraft on my other content for as little as a dollar and get exclusive rewards at patreon.com slash run jump stomp. Okay, so then live and then patron and then I move this up and I get rid of patron and I get rid of live. So now Because now we do that, then the sponsor, then the music break, and then straight into the news. I think I think I may do it that way. <clears throat> uh, Fisto. <clears throat> 
It says, I don't think it will be a port. Nintendo has been pretty upfront with all their ports. Uh, Mario Kart 8 for Switch and all the HD Zeldas when they announced, but I don't know. Uh, I think I made a point very, very similar to that uh, when I made that video that I was talking about. And if you haven't watched that video yet, just click the link and add it to your watch later list, and then you can uh, you can watch later. And if you haven't subscribed over on YouTube yet, what are you doing, man? Click that button. All right. <clears throat> This is killing me. It's from being outside. That's what it is. It's from being outside. I haven't been able to go outside in months because I live in hell. I go outside and walk for an hour, and now I'm like coughing up a lung. All right, here we go. Well, we finally... No. Let me start a different way. The question that I think most people asked when Nintendo first unveiled Nintendo Labo is, what's going to happen when my dog chews through one of these cardboard pieces or my kid loses one of these cardboard pieces? Am I going to be able to get replacements for it? without rebuying the whole game? And the answer is yes. Nintendo said that the answer was yes, but then they kind of backtracked on it and everybody was still just kind of like not sure what the hell is going on. Well, the yesterday, uh, we finally, uh, Nintendo finally put uh, some stuff up on the Nintendo online store and its prices for Nintendo um, Labo replacement sheets, basically. Uh, and if you go there, the prices vary depending on what parts you need. And they have everything broken down into very specific parts. So, for instance, uh, they have the Nintendo Labo Robot Kit Accessory Pack, which looks like it comes with these little plastic grommets, rubber bands, and, and a couple of other things, which I'm not really sure what they are, but none of them look like cardboard. That's like $9.99. If you want to replace the Nintendo Labo Robot Kit Knobs Cardboard Pack, um, I don't know what that means. If you have played Nintendo Labo uh, Robot Kit, then you probably understand. But that's $5.99. I'll scroll down a little bit more. Um, if you want to get the Fishing Rod Cardboard Pack, that's $8.99. So let's say that you build the Fishing Rod uh, game, and then, I don't know, somebody dumps a coffee all over it. Well, now it's destroyed. For eight ninety nine, you the same price as that cup of coffee, probably if you went to Starbucks or something. Um, for eight ninety nine, you can now replace that fishing rod and build it again. So uh, there's more prices. Uh, there, there's that's more. I'm sorry. Let me start that over. That's not everything that's there. There's a lot more that you can find. So just follow the link in the show notes, and um, you'll find all of that stuff there. Um, I, I am really curious to so people who have uh, Nintendo Labo, like how, I know it's made out of cardboard, but if you have it and pieces have already been destroyed, <laughs> I, I'm curious, I would love to hear from you if pieces have already been destroyed. Uh, T. Monksington, that's a hard name to pronounce, man. Uh, he says, I've seen replacement parts on the GameStop website as well. Oh, you know what? I never even thought to check there. Um, that's a really good point. And are they, I'm curious if they're the same price as the prices on the Nintendo store. Um, like it didn't say shipping. I, I added it to my cart and I went to check out and I was like, well, I'm afraid it's going to make me check out before it tells me shipping prices or something um, because usually like it'll calculate that stuff before I even hit the checkout button um, but it, it didn't tell me that so I wasn't sure how much shipping was for that uh, but I can't imagine it would be too much and you know now that I'm thinking about it let's let's go ahead and check Amazon and see if Amazon has any of those replacement parts because if you've got Amazon Prime then you 
have a little bit of advantage because you don't have to pay for any um, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't have to pay for any shipping on that. And I'm scrolling through and I'm not seeing any, any of the replacement stuff on Amazon. And you know, that's not a big surprise. Nintendo and Amazon, they, they tend to butt heads a little bit in traditionally. So anyway, uh, now we know the prices for, uh, Labo replacement sheets and, uh, they're not too bad. They're pretty reasonable. They're making a killing on that cardboard. I don't know, man. It costs a lot of money to ship stuff places. And, you know, you got to put that stuff on a boat someplace. And, you know, game cartridges, they're really, really light. I think cardboard, I, I know it sounds stupid to say that it's heavy, but compared to um, what we're usually getting, those game cartridges, which you can see like right behind me, right there, if you're watching the video on YouTube or if you're live on Twitch, um, that stuff's really light compared to cardboard. Uh, I think that cardboard is going to be pretty expensive for Nintendo to ship, and that's why those prices are what they are. And I think that they're reasonable prices, personally. All right, we'll name that Labo. <sighs> What's next? Oh, boy. Let me just click this real quick. Okay, it's not going to play out loud. I want to make sure I got the name right. So Howard Lincoln, I think, right? Yeah, Howard Lincoln. Okay. So this is pretty surprising, actually. Um, if you're my age, you lived through this layer of controversy surrounding video games. Um, when I was a kid, there was um, this controversy about violence in video games. And, you know, that doesn't seem to have really gone anywhere, but it kind of hit a fevered pitch uh, right around the time of the Sega CD uh, because of a game called Night Trap. And uh, Night Trap was this really weird game. This was an era where they had this, this idea of full motion video games where they would record scenes uh, like with actors and... Uh, these actors would portray the scene in a bunch of different ways, and then based on the inputs from the player, different things would happen in the game, and it would select which scene you got to watch, if that makes any sense. And one of the games that used this FMV, or full motion video uh, technology, was Night Trap. And it was this really weird game. It actually had like a, a, a big actress... Maybe not at the time, but formerly big actress. Um, Donna Plato, I think was her name. She was uh, the sister on Different Strokes, which was a massively popular sitcom in the 80s. Uh, she ended up, you know, her acting career didn't really go too far after that show got canceled. And she ended up making this game. And she was this, she was the, the, she was the star of the game, basically. And she was in charge of, she was talking directly to you, the player, and discussing uh, how you were going to help this house of, full of girls uh, avoid being killed by these vampires. And it was... You know, if you ever watched any footage from this game, it was really, really violent. Not in a sense of gore, but all of the violence was implied. And this was at a time when everybody thought, and I know that there's still people out there that think this, but everybody thought video games are only for children. And when I say children, they meant, you know, like 10-year-olds. And children should not have access to stuff like this. And 
um, the video game industry basically got sued by the U.S. government. And the video game industry had to sit in front of Congress and explain themselves, you know, to people like, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of his name now. Uh, he ran for president a few years ago and didn't win. And um, uh, Tipper Gore was there too. Uh, but it, do it doesn't matter. They had to sit there and explain themselves to these politicians. And there was this very uh, Howard Lincoln, who at the time was, I think, president of Nintendo of America, he was talking about Night Trap. And, well, actually, let me go back just a little bit. Uh, Ted Kal K Kaczynski, not Kaczynski, <laughs> Ted Kalinsky, uh, he was president of Sega of America. And he wanted to get kind of out in front of this violence in video games thing and establish like a ratings board. An, an electronics software ratings board, if you will. Uh, and he wanted to establish this ratings board. He wanted to work with Nintendo to make this ratings board to have the video game industry regulate themselves so that the U.S. government wouldn't come in and start regulating them. And Nintendo just said, no, we're not going to do that. What we'll do instead is we will censor the games that come to our platform because we get to, to decide what games are on our platform. Well, while at the same time, Sega was like, well, we can decide that too, but we want to be more open so that, you know, older people who might want to play video games might, might be able to play something um, that might appeal to them. And I think that there's a lot of wisdom in what, actually, I think it was Tom Kalinske. I can't remember his first name, uh, but Mr. Kalinske is what I'll call him. He wanted to establish a ratings board. Nintendo said, we're just going to censor our own stuff. And that's basically what they did. They said, you know, Mortal Kombat has blood. We're going to change the blood to sweat. And we're going to get rid of the fatality. So you can't do that stuff on our system. And that's where this whole idea of Nintendo being the kids system uh, kind of came from. Uh, basically because Nintendo was saying, we're going to censor our stuff. Well... Uh, it's funny because there's a moment where Howard Lincoln, uh, president of Nintendo of America, I believe, he was sitting in uh, testifying in front of Congress and he says, uh, I, I'm here to tell you right now that there's no way that a game like Night Trap will ever be on a Nintendo system. And now that I've given you this long and winding path around, now you get to understand where are we now? Well, Night Trap the 25th anniversary, I can't believe it was 25 years ago, but the 25th anniversary uh, version of the game is coming to Nintendo Switch. And by all accounts, this game is terrible. Really, really bad. Not a whole lot of... <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of great gameplay for this game, but... This game is really, really famous because of the controversy that surrounded video games at the time. And if that doesn't interest you even a little bit, then I'm just really, really surprised because it really is interesting to me. It's, it's interesting enough to me, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that there's actually a documentary out there. And I watched it. It's like a 50-minute documentary, and I watched the whole thing. Uh, probably, I don't know, a year ago? It might have been less than that, I'm not sure. But like a year ago, this documentary came out. And all the stuff that happened with how Night Trap actually got made and then remade multiple times is incredibly interesting. And I don't know if I'll pick up this game uh, ever because I don't think I really want to play it. But at the same time, I feel like I just want to experience so that I can say that, yeah, I played Night Trap. It was terrible. Uh, and I laughed. I laughed at it, you know, because that's the kind of game it is. Captain Logan in chat says, this is an interesting story since the reprisal of violent video games warping the minds of the youth. Yes. I mean, it's not. Well, that argument, Captain Logan, has never gone anywhere. People have always said that violent video games are warping 
the minds of the youth. And before that, it was violent movies. And before that, it was rock and roll music. And before that, it was something else that old people didn't like. It's always going to be something that old people don't like or aren't interested in checking out that is going to warp the minds of the youth. And, you know, eventually Sega kind of won out. They they tried to make their own ratings board. Um, just, and I can't remember what the ratings were, but it wasn't like the E for everyone thing. And then eventually um, Nintendo finally got with the program and they were like, okay, we'll all pitch in money together. We will establish this independent rating board to check out our games so that parents can know what's okay for their kid to play and what's not okay for their kid to play. And I got to say, Tom Kalinske, he had it right all along. You know what? Give, you know, let anybody make whatever the hell game that they want. And, you know, if you want to put it on your platform, then great. But not every game is for a kid. And that's why we have... M for mature games now. And that's why we have T for teen. It's so that somebody can walk into a store and be able to tell the difference. Yes, this is okay for my 10 year old. And this is very much not okay for my 10 year old. And it's sometimes it's tough telling your 10 year old that, but too bad. That's the kind of thing that you got to do. And I just think that, um, the fact that it, that night trap is coming to the Nintendo switch is hilarious because, uh, and even the the video uh, that announced it, I think it was uh, on Nintendo Force's uh, YouTube channel. It even shows Howard Lincoln like sitting in Congress saying, uh, "We're never going to, <laughs> we're never going to have Night Trap on a Nintendo console." And that just is really hilarious to me. Um, uh, Asset Gebnut says that, uh, there's no evidence that it warps the minds of the youth. Um, Captain Logan says, I was just being sardonic towards the government intelligence. <laughs> um, Morgan 13 disagrees. She says, uh, there is some psychological evidence for it, but a kids shouldn't be playing stuff that's bad enough to do it. And B the effect of positive behavior in video games, causing positive behavior in your kids is far more significant. And I totally agree with that. And not just for behavior, but also for fine motor skills. Like, uh, it's the, the, the fine motor skills that you get from manipulating these really, really complicated controllers. I know I'm, I'm holding up a PlayStation controller and I'm on a Nintendo show. That's just the one that I can reach right now because I was playing Overwatch this morning. Um, you know, that really does help people. And I think that it also gives some people a way to release their aggression. Like I was, I rem remember lots of times where I was having a bad day or something and I would come home and I would shoot some dudes to, I would put on some loud music, have my headphones on, and I would shoot some dudes in a game. And you know what? It would make me feel better. It would make me feel better. So, but that's that's very much beside the point. So if you want to check out the reveal trailer for um, Night Trap for the Nintendo Switch, click on the link in the show notes. But also, if you are at all interested in the history of this game, and it is very interesting, there's a second link in the show notes that says Night Trap 25 Years Later Documentary uh, from the My Life in Gaming YouTube channel. Uh, super good video, and they interview the the the, the main people behind the game. Uh, obviously not the main actress, because because she ended up committing suicide a few years later. Um, not related to the game. I think it was drug drug related, but uh, very, very interesting uh, stuff. And, uh, you know, don't let your kids play Night Trap. <clears throat> Save. I think a lot of parents sadly buy the game for their kids when the, and then just set it and forget it instead of taking interest in their activities. If anything bad happens, they throw the blame around. I totally agree with that, Snow. Like, I, I remember when I was... Let's see. When I was in high school... Let's see, 19... That was a long time ago. Let's 
I just got to look up something. Yeah, okay. So in 1993, I worked at a video game store called Babbage's. And um, we sold video games, of course. And I remember many, many very young children coming in and buying Mortal Kombat for either the Sega Genesis or the Super Nintendo. And this is a game where you can rip people's heads off or rip their hearts out um, or burn them alive. And that's not a game for kids. And parents would constantly come in and buy that stuff for their kids. Um, Kent Logan, Console Wars book and Audible covers those events well. Yes, it is one of my favorite books, Captain Logan. I love Console Wars. It's a really good book. Are you guys up here talking? No, I'm down here. Well, go away. You shut up more. <laughs> Who is it? Nobody. What do you want? I'm back. All right. Here we go. Well, speaking of violent video games, I remember this this is a game where we, we keep talking about games that I played when I was a kid. And Wolfenstein was a game that I played when I was a kid. And I remembered very much from id Software running down the corridors of the Nazi uh, castle and shooting dudes uh, with the gun. And you could see, like, the blood and stuff coming out. And, you know, I probably... It's, it's tough because games nowadays look so much more realistic. But at the time, it's still, like, I still remember that vividly so maybe i shouldn't have been playing those games back then but wolfenstein uh has a long long history in in video gaming and wolfenstein 2 is now coming to the switch we already knew that that was happening uh it's ported it's being ported by the same people who ported doom to the switch another very very violent shooter game um, but why am I talking about it today? Uh, because according to Wario64, and this is a guy who, if you don't follow him on Twitter, you absolutely should because he finds deals. I'm pretty sure he's a bot, uh, although he'll tell you different. Um, he, he finds deals and posts them like nonstop. So if something goes on sale, you, you'll get a notification from Wario64, hey, this is on sale. And uh, kind of cool. But... This is what they posted today, uh, and for those of you who are watching the um, the the show here, I'll flip over to the main screen. That's not the right screen. I gotta go this screen. Sorry about that. Um, you can now see the <laughs> the the oh my god, I can't think of the word. The art. The cover art. There we go. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you can see the cover art. And, of course, the first, I don't know, the top inch of the game's cover art is covered up with a big, uh, it's weird because they're using the Nintendo Wii U uh, browser icon as their symbol for an internet download is required. Uh, micro SD card may be required. So... If you go out and buy a physical version of Wolfenstein 2 for the Nintendo Switch, you are also going to have to download something as well. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be upset about this, but I'm I'm here to tell you that maybe maybe you shouldn't be super upset about this. This is not a huge surprise. I mean, if I bought this game on disc for my PS4 and brought it home and put it in, guess what I'd have to do? before I played it. I would have to install it on my PS4. So I understand where people don't want to have to download 
something, but I'm not sure. It, it, it all depends on what exactly is hidden behind the, the, the download. And the reason why this really comes to uh, uh, an issue here is because of the small footprint of the Nintendo Switch's uh, built-in uh, memory. Not memory, but storage. Uh, it, it comes with 32 gigabytes of storage, which is really not a lot. In fact, I have a video on my YouTube channel of why 32 gigabytes is going to be okay. And, you know, games are bigger than I thought. And physical physical cartridges are requiring downloads. And this is starting to get to be a little bit irritating, but at the same time, okay, an internet download is required. Does that mean that you can't play the game without internet? I don't think so. I just think it means that you have to patch your game. And what if somebody doesn't have internet? I bet you that that game still works. Probably there's some parts that are not there. Now, what's the real solution here? I think that the real solution is that these game developers stop putting out physical copies for their games if they are not going to pony up and buy a big enough cartridge to hold the whole game. That's, that's my solution. And now I know that that's not going to happen, but at the same time, an SD card is not super expensive and it's not like it's a proprietary uh, memory like Morgan 13 in chat says. Um, you can get them fairly cheaply and you also don't have to have every game installed all of the time. Uh, for instance, let's say that you have 200 hours in Breath of the Wild and you're probably done with that game. It's been sitting on the shelf for a few months now and maybe you haven't touched it. I think it's okay to delete it. Hold on to your save game. Your game's not going anywhere, but delete it. You don't have to have everything installed all the time. However, if you've got a big enough SD card, then you really don't have to worry about it. I have a ridiculous number of games on my Nintendo Switch. Um, I have a few physical games, but most of the games that I have on my Switch are digital games. And I never even worry about how much space I have. And I'm sure that at some point I'm going to get to a, a point where I go to install something or download something. And it's going to say, no, you need to make room for this. And I'll be like, okay. Uh, and actually this happened to my son because up until recently he did not have uh, an SD card in his Switch. He just had the main memory. And he bought Rocket League for his Switch. And when we went to install it, it was like, you don't have enough room for this here are some things that you haven't played in a while and you can delete them and your save games will be saved. And I thought that that was really cool because it told you, look, you haven't played this in a long time. And I was like, and, and so I pointed this out to him. I said, look, these are the games you haven't played in a while. You want to uninstall them? And he was like, yeah, let's go ahead and uninstall those. And then I went on Amazon and I bought him an SD card and I put it in his switch. And next time that he goes to download something, it won't be an issue. Um, snow goes ham says, thankfully SD cards are super cheap. Physical copies are for collectors. In my opinion, uh, Morgan says, well, we all remember buying Sony's memory cartridges. They were expensive. They were expensive because they were proprietary, which was a huge issue. Uh, a set says, could you go back to save if you wanted to play later? Yes, you can go back to a save. So let's say that, I am like like I like I used Breath of the Wild as an example because I put a lot of time into that. I can just delete that game. The save stays on my my system. And then if I decide I can install that game again later, my save is, should still be there. That's the way that the system is set up. So, uh yes, you can go back to a save afterwards. Now, keep in mind if something happens to your console, that save is going to be gone because Nintendo still has not given us, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Cloud saves. We all kind of want that. Nintendo hasn't done that yet. But uh, right now, if you delete a game and you reinstall it, you can pick up right where you left off. 
Um, Snow Goes Ham says, imagine if we had to use GameCube memory sticks for the Switch. That would be terrible. That would be really, really terrible. But uh, people are upset about the internet download required for the the physical version of Wolfenstein. And I, I can see both both arguments here. Um, if, if you're going to sell it to me as a physical copy, I shouldn't have to download anything. But at the same time, can I still put the cartridges and cartridge in and play? That remains to be seen. Uh, so only time will tell. That's right, Snow. Save our saves, man. Um, Wolf. And I should probably save since we're talking about saves. All right, I'm going to take these last two stories and um, lightning around them. All right, I'm going to take the last two stories and lightning around them. So we're going to go real fast. I'm going to talk a lot less. Uh, Paladins is this cool first-person shooter. Um, a lot of people call it like an Overwatch ripoff, and I can definitely see why. Uh, although it's very different, there's definitely some things that it does differently than than Overwatch. Uh, but Paladins is actually a pretty fun shooter, and it's a free-to-play shooter from the same people that made the Smite games. Well, there's only one Smite game that made the game Smite. Uh, enough so that they actually have crossover characters between the two. Uh, but Paladins had a recent update, and I guess some data miners found some Nintendo Switch-related files. So maybe we will see Paladins come to the Switch. I hope so. I think uh, since we're not going to be getting Overwatch on the Switch, I think it would be fantastic if we could get uh, Paladins on the Switch because it's a very, very fun game. Uh, speaking of games that are on other platforms and possibly coming to the Switch, P Platinum Games, which made uh, the wonderful 101, uh, they have, um, let's see, who is it? It's Atsushi Inaba and Hideki uh, Kamiya. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, they want to change the fact that it's only on the Wii U. And they were talking at Reboot Develop 2018 in Croatia. And they said, we're going to knock the audience participation up a bit. They're still trying to negotiate with Nintendo on whether a possible wonderful 101 Switch release could happen, but it always helps when the people of the audience at Reboot clap if they'd actually buy a Switch version of the wonderful 101. So anybody who would buy that, please clap. And then afterwards, Eurogamer was talking to uh, uh, Mr. Kamiya, and uh, they said, um, let's see, the where did it go? I lost it. Uh, from their perspective, obviously there are things that they can't talk about, um, other dealings that they have with Nintendo, uh, they can say everything that they said during the speech was, Hey, we should definitely do that. But whether or not it, we're going to do that, uh, is just something that we have to wait in order to find out. Uh, I hope that they do wonderful one one It was this really interesting game that I feel like a lot of people missed out on because it was on a console that nobody bought, um, I didn't get super far in it, uh, mostly because I was just way too bad at the game. But it's this really cool real-time strategy style game where you are controlling like giant groups of people, uh, really, really fast-paced action. And I and you would draw on the screen in order to get them to turn into a gun or something. It was really strange, uh, but also incredibly unique and uh, something that too many people missed out on. So uh, hopefully Platinum Games gets what they want and they're able to port 101 uh, to the Switch. Call that lightning round. Save. Um, let's see. Well, that download means A, their cartridge is too small, definitely, or they're rushing it before polish is complete. I don't think that that's the case, Morgan. I think because the Doom port is, by all accounts, has been pretty fantastic. So uh, my guess is that the, the de not the developer, the publisher has said for the size of the cartridge, they've said, well, this is all we're going to pay for. If you can't get it down to that size, then we'll have to have some stuff downloaded.
All right. All right, everybody, let's start to wrap up the show. I've got a quick anonymous survey that I would like your feedback on. This is for demographic purposes. This is information that I need to bring to advertisers so I can get them to advertise on the show. I just want to make sure that you all understand that any ads that I run on the podcast will always be quick and to the point. Uh, and for products or services that I use or that I think that you might use. Um, the survey should not take more than five minutes. And a big thank you to the people who have already uh, filled it out. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you everyone for being here while I record the show. If you don't know, the live streams are a good bit longer than the audio podcast. So we tend to get sidetracked talking about talking about stuff that isn't included in the audio podcast. So if you want to watch the full show, you can either come and watch live at twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp, or you can watch the videos after the fact over at youtube.com slash run, jump, stomp. Uh, finally, if you are looking to support my content, you can do so by heading on over to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. You'll find lots of links there that will uh, help me create more content just like this. And this show would not be the same without the live chat. So now comes the time where I thank them. So where did it go? I lost my little list. Here we are. We've got Bravd. We've got Snowgoes Ham, Aset Gebna, Awate86, Captain Logan. Uh, Aerslia, uh, Hopple, um, Link 31254, Lumberjoke 2, Morgan 13, Fisto, Red V Blue 32, T Mussington, I finally got that name right, and Magister. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. And before I go, I've got a new review of the show. Uh, I've decided that I am going to read the reviews on the show because as soon as I stopped reading the reviews on the show, people stopped reviewing the show. Uh, but I've got one here from Mr. Melly. Uh, they gave the show five stars and they said, amazing sound and content. Switchcraft is a really great podcast. It doesn't take too much of your time. I've been listening to this podcast for two months now and the content is great, and the little hints of Nintendo sound bites are awesome. One thing that I'm really impressed with is the sound quality. Bill has a great sounding podcast and very clear to hear. While most podcasts have you crank up your volume, which, uh, I'm sorry, volume because there's so much noise around, it is distracting and takes away from the experience. You're doing a great job, Bill. Keep it up. Well, I will keep doing it as long as you keep listening. Thank you guys for hanging out with me while I record. Thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for all the support. And thank you to the people who've already done the survey. I really appreciate it. Make sure that you check out Tom Winter and Note Block because that's their music that you can hear on the show. I'm out of here and I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Bye-bye.